Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Witchwood Invitational. My name is TJ. Joining me on the desk to start things off is Nathan, the Admiral. That's Admirable Zavora. Today, we have an action-packed day filled with some new cards, some new decks from the set rotation, of course, the Witchwood. And uh, we've gathered uh, eight pros and streamers from the Americas and Europe to battle it out. Uh, in this new meta that we have, Admirable. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Anytime this new set drops, I'm, I'm super excited about it. But in this one, it is a total upheaval of the meta game. Yeah. A bunch of sets rotate out. We had cards move to the Hall of Fame. And now with the Witchwood, plenty of new cards introduced. And in, in my opinion, some of the most exciting cards that we've ever seen in Hearthstone. Yeah, I've been jamming Hearthstone as much as I have uh, could in the past 24 hours, as I'm sure you have, as I'm sure many of you have, and uh, as I'm sure a lot of the players we're going to be seeing competing today have. Uh, before we jump into some of the action, uh, we're going to go ahead and give you guys a brief overview of how things are going to work today. As I mentioned, we've gathered eight players from the Americas and Europe to battle it out region versus region in a sort of fun invitational format. Each player on each of these teams has submitted decks for three unique classes. Each match will be conquest, best of five, with no bans. The first four matches uh, will be those best of fives, and each match win for a team gives them a ban advantage in the finals. So each match that they win gives them one additional ban in the winner-take-all finals uh, at the end of today. That's right. It's, you're fighting hard for those extra additional bans. I mean, that's, that's where the money counts is in that last match where yep. the teams have to choose one of their members to represent the entire team in that final match. Yeah. And uh, I, I hope that players have been experimenting with some new stuff. I hope that we're going to see some pretty crazy decks. Uh, but I also hope that we're going to see some stuff that people just kind of break things with. You know, that people <laughs> just, they're super strong. And uh, those are going to be the players that we're probably going to be seeing uh, in the finals. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the eight players we've gathered to compete. Representing Europe, we have Orange, Tyler, RDU, and Show. Lots of great players and some great deck builders as well in that lineup of four from Europe. Yeah, Orange, of course, a representative of the World Championship this year. Uh, Hunter's been a really big talk with the new set coming out, and Orange yeah. has always loved to play Hunter, but right there with that, there's Warrior. Yes. Using, utilizing uh, Baku to upgrade your hero power at the start of your game if your deck only includes uh, odd-costed cards. I saw Show streaming some last night, and he was playing some Tank Up, and I love to see that. Uh, I missed Tank Up, Admirable. I missed it so much. Uh, but Europe is going to be going up against the four players representing the Americas. Ali Straza, Dog, Savitz, and of course, former world champion Firebat. Yeah, uh, Fire Bat. <laughs> Fire <Fury> Bat. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, again, all these players, uh, fantastic deck builders. I think Dog is always up there in the conversations. He's always trying to find the craziest decks uh, that win some games. Always floating at high legend. Uh, ranks around the beginning of every set rotation and every new set. Yep. Uh, so uh, we, I think we're going to have some some pretty good matches uh, going on today. Uh, and we can take a look at the schedule. Again, the first four matches have been predetermined. We're going to start off with Orange versus Ali Straza, then move into Tyler versus Dog, RDU versus Savitz, and Show versus Firebat. And of course, at the end of the day, we're going to have the, the finals which is a winner-take-all finals where each team will choose one representative from their team to compete in the finals. And the winner is the champion of the Witchwood Invitational. Taking home all those Witchwood marbles. All the Witchwood marbles. I don't think this actually exists, but, you know, metaphorical. All the Witchwood, Witchwood pumpkins, <laughs> as we have. Little tiny pumpkin marbles. That'd be cute. That's right. Yeah, I want those now. And, of course, make sure you guys, if you haven't already, uh, log in now. Uh, if you log into Hearthstone uh, during this a release event. You'll get three free Witchwood packs, and you'll also uh, get a free Legendary uh, upon logging into the game. There's also a quest that you can complete upon logging in that'll give you Lunara, the new Druid hero. Finally, some more Druid representation. Druid has been so underrepresented <laughs> uh, competitively that yeah. finally we're getting something for it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. it's Poor uh, Jades. <laughs> poor Jades. And even before that, Combo Druid. I hope that uh, we're going to be seeing, or maybe we'll see some Druid decks today. I was experimenting with some Spiteful Summoner Druid yesterday. Uh, but there's so many decks to talk about, I don't want to spend too much time talking about That's any right. one deck. Uh, we'll, we'll get into all that discussion there's once so the matches on. get underway. There I is so it. much going on. Uh, but let's go ahead and introduce the first match that we're going to have coming up on stream. It's going to be Orange versus Ali Straza. Yeah, six unique classes. I don't know. There's uh, two Warlocks. Oh, I'm sorry, two Warlocks. Yep, yeah, missed that one. Uh, but I think one of the ones that we're most excited about, I, I have to say, 
Probably the shaman. I, shaman is looking so good right now. I mean, the Shutter Walk is just an insane card. It's a nine mana shaman legendary. It says, replay all the battle cries that you have played previously in this game. <laughs> it turns out there's a lot of strong battle cries in shaman, especially with Grumble, uh, which takes all of your minions and puts them back into your hand at one cost, uh, which which means that you can basically bring back um, Shutterwalk. Shutterwalk. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good, I'm going to get dunked out on that word uh, all day long. Sort of sort of a weird battle card, too. One of my favorites also is uh, you can actually use the new hero card to battle cry deal three damage to all minions. And that works with Shutterwalk as well. It doesn't just count your minion battle cries. It's just any battle cry you've used. Or you could play uh, Phantom Militia. <laughs> Let me get you guys a closer look at that one. There don't, it is. <laughs> don't judge him by his size. He's got Echo. He does there's, have Echo. There's multiple of those you're working with. If you play him three times in a turn, he almost equals uh, as as large of a card that survives that Hagatha. Hagatha, the, <laughs> the witch has. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a, a, t a ton of decks that, you know, players have been experimenting with that I've been experimenting with uh, that are coming out as the front runners. But today's going to be a good opportunity uh, to see those decks in action and allow these players to showcase their skills and their and their deck building. Uh, but it looks like we do have a pre-match interview ready with our first competitor. Uh, we're joined by Orange, who's representing Europe in the Witchwood Invitational. Hey, Orange, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing just fine. It's been, been a fun day experimenting with the new cards. Yeah, so uh, what have you been having the most fun with uh, so far in the first 24 hours that the Witchwood's been out? The, the literal first game I played was with Shutterwalk Shaman, and uh, I had a... My first game, I had a turn that went on for like five minutes due to the Shutterwalk <laughs> animation. <laughs> and that's still the highlight of this expansion for me. I, I, I'm having a ton of fun with uh, Shutterwalk, so All right. uh, really, really enjoying it so far. Now give me the worst deck that you've experimented with. What what just didn't work out that, you, that you've been trying to make work? Uh, God, I have to... I actually haven't tried... That many decks since I've had this, I've been mostly trying to refine decks that I knew were kind of good. Um, but I, I tried a very, very all in uh, Odd Hunter that uh, okay. was really that was really poorly built and went like 0 <laughs> 6 with that. So, <laughs> well, so that's probably the worst one I've tested so far. I've always, but I think Dark is kind of good. I've always leaned towards you as a as a hunter expert, so I'm sure you'll come up with something that's going to be. Uh... Uh, dominate later on. So you're gonna, you're gonna be going up against uh, the Americas team today in the Witchwood Invitational. Are you guys gonna take it all the way? Is is Europe the most dominating region in the Witchwood? Have you seen our team? We got this. All right, man. All right. Well, good luck in your matches, and and thanks so much Excellent. for joining to, joining us. I, I I was having a lot of success with uh, uh with the the Baku. Odd cost hunter. Yeah, uh, Dr. Jake Kaninki, who's going to be joining us on the desk today, too, he was having a lot of success with it. His very first game, uh, he got the three damage hero power, thanks to Baku, of course, it mm -hmm. upgrades your hero power at the start of the game. And he was playing against a warrior that had tank up right at the start of the game. And four is greater than three, and it was not, not shortly thereafter he had to concede because he just couldn't deal damage because his deck was built so bad. That's what, exactly what he said to me, too. He said, I built this so bad. I was like, I don't know. It looks like you just got tank up, man. That's a tough thing to beat. Baku the Moon Eater. Such a cool card. Such love a that cool card. card. That's one of my favorite cards in Hearthstone. Yeah, one of the first legendaries that I opened, and I'm going to be trying it in literally every single class <laughs> as much as I can. Uh, but now we're joined by one of the competitors from the Americas team for the Witchwood Invitational. It's Ali Straza. Hey, Ali. How's it going? Hello, guys. It's going well. How are you? Good. Doing uh, good. Oh, asked me how I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> she's, yeah, she's how like, are how you guys doing? Not just me. How are you guys? <laughs> um, so uh, the Witchwood's been out for less than 24 hours now. Uh, what's yeah. been your experience like so far? Have you been enjoying it? Oh, it's so much trying to pack into one day. That it's It's been a lot of fun, a lot of really cool new cards. Uh, I'm excited to show you guys my lineup. It's been a lot of fun. Do you feel like you have a good grasp of the... of what has become of the meta right now? <laughs> oh, I feel like one day is just not enough. I mean, yeah, I guess for a 24 hour meta, I feel like I do have a grasp on it, but that could change like so dramatically. So who knows? <laughs> could change after the first game, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so how's, the, how's the, the team feeling? You guys confident that you're gonna be able to, to take down Europe and become the Witchwood Invitational Champions? 
Yeah, I mean, we've got to represent NA well here. So I'm confident in our abilities. It should be interesting. All right, well, I'm excited to see what you guys have brought to the table. Uh, good luck in your matches, and we'll see what you got. Thank you. 24 hour meta. I know. Uh, this is like the third. We need new cards every day. This, this is the <laughs> third set in a row where I think both of us have cast literally the day after. It feels that way. And I, I just had so much, like, excitement slash anxiety a few days before the set came out, uh, you know, tr waiting to try and theory craft and get my hands on some of the cards. To, I remember uh, I lost my voice in one of those. Around. You did, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was the last one, right? Uh, yeah, Trinity Series. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, we, we should be in uh, – we have a lot of cool stuff in store. So we can – I guess we could start – trying to talk about what decks we think might appear. Wow. Uh, you know, Shutterwalk Shaman is probably the, the one that's being the most talked about because of the crazy things that you can do with that deck. Yeah. Uh, basically just like a control Shaman shell with some battle cries like Serenite Chain Gang. Um, Life Drinker. Life Drinker as well. Life Drinker is a 4-mana 3-3. Three, three. It drains your opponent for 3 on battle cry. Deals yeah. in 3. You gain 3 life. Good card. And when you repeat that multiple times <laughs> with Shutterwalk as the game goes on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can also, you know, kind of get the grumble out of your deck uh, with the sand. Sandbinder. Sandbinder. Yep. Uh, I want to say sand titan. Uh oh, that's it's shaman right away. <laughs> shaman right away. That's what I like to see. Orange. It looks like you should have walked shaman to me, and Alistar is going to be playing rogue uh, as the first deck. So uh, I've seen a few rogue archetypes pop up. Uh, Temple rogue is probably the best performing deck. Um, and uh, the Burgle Rogue, the opponent's class card Rogue, is also a deck that I've seen a little bit more of because they've gotten a lot of support with some of the cards from the Witchwood. Yeah, so taking a look at uh, Orange's deck, I mean, it, it is it is quite different than a lot of the Shaman decks that we've seen in the past. You know, typically they've been very board-centric, they've been based around utilizing totems in some way or having very aggressive starts. Mm -hmm. This deck operates more like a control uh, slash combo deck than it does, you know, pretty much previous to every single Shaman deck. That, that we've seen in, in Hearthstone. It's got a lot of card draw in here with Mana Tide Totem, with Farsight, uh, with Sandbinder. Sandbinder is a uh, four mana, two four neutral card that says draw an elemental from your deck. Uh, so you do a lot of work crafting to have a specific suite of, ele or a specific suit rather, of elementals so that you're drawing the ones exactly that you need. It's not just a value thing of elementals, it's that you're, you're in effect searching up the specific ones you use to unlock this giant potential of Shutterwalk. Yeah. And on Ali Straza's side, uh, Temple Rogue's gotten a few more tools. Uh, one of the big ones, I think, which is a card that a lot of players had rated very highly, was Hench Clan Thug, uh, which is a three mana three three that whenever your hero attacks, it gains plus one plus one. And that effect continues to happen over and over again. So if you get one of those down on the board early as a rogue, you can invest in your dagger up on turn two, play Hench Clan Thug on turn three, and then immediately with attack with your dagger on turn on turn three when you play it. So it's a 4-4 four four immediately. And on top of that, it keeps getting buffed up every time you attack. Yep, natural snowball. Natural snowball. Yeah, so uh, it's also a neutral, so it can be played in other decks as well. I've seen some players experiment with it in Druid. Uh, I feel like Warrior is also a place where it could live. Lights just as Paladin. Lights just as Paladin. It's plus four, plus four for one mana. You get to chip away at some one health, guys. That's right. Perfect, perfect deck. Yeah, but Alistraza starts off with a combo we've come to know and sometimes love. <laughs> uh, Prince Keliseth, Shadow Step, Prince Keliseth. Every card in Alistraza's deck is going to have plus two, plus two now. That's right. And you're going to search up right away. Uh, Interesting to note, though, Orange, uh, post-Doomsayer, stuck a mana tied totem to the table. This is a scary little minion to face off against yep. because if it starts cranking out card draw, not only do you still need to take care of it, but Orange's deck at the end of the day is a combo deck. Its goal is to assemble a giant combination of cards, largely uh, not fight for board, but rather just fight for defense, yes. strictly defense until he has uh, just an overwhelming amount of stuff to do with his combo. Yeah. So Ali Straza is a little bit under the clock here, needs to apply some pressure, but also wants to disrupt Orange at the same time. So uh, the minions in her deck, they, they tend to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, and two copies of Spellbreaker, you know, they're great if in the mid-game situation, Orange is trying to say hi to Doomsayer behind a couple Saranite Chain Gags. Mm -hmm. Or if he's trying to do something tricky like split uh, a Mana Tide with a Doomsayer, so that way Ali Straza's choice, let him draw cards or keep the board presence. Yeah, a few more of the 
uh, new cards that Alex Trossa has in her deck are Marsh Drake, which is a three mana 5 4 that summons a 2 1 Poisonous for your opponent. Also has great synergy in Rogue as well, because a lot of times if you've developed a dagger on turn two, on turn three you play the Marsh Drake and dagger down the 2 1. Yeah. So it's basically a three mana 5 4 that you have to expend a little bit of health in the dagger charge. In order to be able to deal with the drawback, reminds me like of like a like a weird flame imp in that regard. Deals you some damage, but you get a big minion. You get a big minion. That's right. And also uh, Witchwood Piper, which is a four mana three three, I believe that uh, uh, draws the lowest cost minion uh, from your deck. Yeah. If you're tied for if you're tied for lowest cost, it'll just draw a random one of those. Yes. Uh, and. Alex Straza only has the Firefly at that one slot, which means that it'll be guaranteed that unless uh, she draws those Fireflies early on. In which case, it could draw Prince Kellis at this well. That's right. If you've drawn those. So, uh, a pretty cool effect. And Face Collector, a 3 mana 2 2 with Echo that adds a, a random legendary minion to your hand. Yeah. So on turn nine, you can play three of those bad boys and get three legendaries and summon three two twos. Right, Echo is the ability to play the card multiple times in, in that particular turn. The yes. turn you play it, it'll add uh, an additional Phantom copy to your hand, and as long as you have mana, you can play that Phantom copy. And something that I learned was a really cool interaction was with Dead Man's Hand. If you have one of those Phantom copies of Echo cards in your hand, Dead Man's Hand will actually shuffle it back into your deck as well. So you can use it, decide if you want a Dead Man's Hand it, and then at the end of the turn, if you still have that Phantom copy, keep playing it. Shuffle it in. Uh, but Orange is just trying to stifle the pressure. Uh, it's, you know, like you mentioned, classic combo deck. Just trying to stifle enough of the pressure. <laughs> the, the word classic there's really funny to me because I'm like, ah, yeah, shutter walk. <laughs> classic shutter walk shaman. Its game plan <laughs> is similar <laughs> to a classic combo deck. Yes. But its win condition is very, very, very much so different. And brand new. <laughs> Sometimes it's you. You don't even realize how it's beating you <laughs> until like <laughs> <laughs> until you <laughs> leave your computer for five minutes and come back and your hero's yeah, exploded. I mean, if you if you've never seen it before, the first time it happens, you're like, I don't understand what's happening. Oh like, yeah. Like why? Like how is how is he supposed to win? He's just do, dealing a bunch of damage and returning all his minions to your hand. Well, you replay the shutter walk. You know, sometimes multiple times in a game, and what's happening is you're you're healing yourself to thirty via the life drinker battle cry is being stacked up again the life drinker is the uh, drain for three battle cry on your opponent and you do that enough times and, and eventually you get them uh, you know it reminds me a lot of the way that freeze mage used to play where the entire game plan was draw lots of cards stop your opponent from outright killing you and then have a late game push with a sustained mechanism of damage and so ice freeze mage relied on ice block which is now rotated to the hall of fame and so you look at new combo decks, wow, how else am I going to combo someone else? You, you probably need that extra life. So Life Drinker with Shutterwalk, a very natural fit for this style of combo. Yeah, and it is going to be hard for Orange to sort of get to that point in this game because Ali Straza with the double Prince Kelseth early on in the game. It's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure. Serenite Knight Chain Gang, four mana, one card, seven, two, four, five, with Taunt. That yeah. is so much pressure. And Orange is going to need to find a way to uh, stifle some of this. And it looks like he's just going to try and absorb some damage with the Doomsayer. Throw at the Loot Hoarder to, to draw closer to that those combo effects. Yeah, I mean, you think about how much mana that Orange needs to expend in order for uh, the combo to operate properly. Um, there's a couple things that have to happen. Number one, he needs both Life Drinkers down. He needs to have played them at some point. Uh, you're going to have want to have played Sirenite Chain Gang, or otherwise the uh, combo with Grumble or with Zolo the Gorgon doesn't work quite as effectively. With Grumble... Uh, it's a 6-mana 7-7 seven, seven that says Battle Cry, return all of your other minions to your hand and change their cost to 1. Zol of the Gorgon, of course, adds that golden copy to your hand. So both those effects can allow you to play multiple Shutter Walks. But now if you want to play one or the other of those, that's another 3 or 6-mana. Then you on top of that, you need at least one Serenite mm -hmm. Chain Gang down. It's another 4-mana. You know, r just right off the bat, we're looking at minimum 15 mana he needs to sink into cards. They don't have a ton of board presence in order to just unlock the potential of that combo. It's a lot of work he's got to do. Yeah. Whoa! Ali Strauss like, gets a shutter walk from the face collector. Whoa! Oh and she's God. got a lot of battle cards of her own. I mean, mind you, there's now two face collectors in there. There's a Sarnite Chain Gang. There's a Spellbreaker. She's got Filespine Slayer, two Prince Keliseths, a Firefly. Like, that's a lot of stuff that Shutterwalk is producing. When she plays that Shutterwalk, it's going to summon a copy of another minion that she has on the field. It's also going to buff her to cards. Additionally, 
Well, it's a copy. It's a copy of itself, right? Oh yeah, a copy of itself. Yes. Yeah. Um, a copy of itself. She's gonna she's add gonna, plus two, plus two again to the minions in her deck. She's gonna she's gonna draw two legendaries because of the face collectors. She's gonna silence something at random, and add a and add a little flame elemental to her hand too. And kill a random minion. <laughs> Yeah, the targets from Shutterwalk are chosen at random, so it actually is quite important uh, that Life Drinker is just an opponent that you drain for yes. three. Volcano. I don't think this is a full board clear. It's not. It's going to leave a 4-2 on the board. Uh, not quite enough, but that is, an, that is enough for the time being for Orange. He's got two Life Drinkers and the Rotten Apple Bomb to try and stabilize a little bit. He's drawn into Shutterwalk. Does that, that need that? to find that Grumble? What is that for? That's a rotten apple bomb. I kept looking at that rotten apple bomb, and I was like, it looks like an arcane golem to me. For, for yeah. <laughs> rotten apple bomb, a five mana, four five taunt uh, that has a death rattle, restore four health to your to your hero. Yeah, nice little road hump for your opponent. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it, it seems like a good anti aggro tool currently, because um, it has thug. taunt. It also has a, a little bit of a heal attached to it. That thug is gonna get. Big. He's already big. Yeah. And he might even get buffed with the Cobalt Scale Bait, which would make him even larger. Yeah, There's a, actually uh, 13, 18. There's lethal setup on the board. Ooh. Orange does draw into Healing Rain, but... He's got a pair of Life Drinkers as well. So uh, he does have the, the Murmuring Elemental in hand. It's a 2-mana 1-1 one, one Elemental. It says, your next battle cry happens twice. Yeah. So with Life Drinker... It's going to stack two Life Drinkers on, and I believe that actually incorporates into uh, Shutterwalk at the end as well. So if you've Murmuring Elementaled a Battle Cry, that I believe that counts twice towards Shutterwalk at the end. I have to say, I haven't paid attention enough. As soon as my opponent plays Shutterwalk, I kind of <laughs> just a lot of battle cries. throw my hands in the air and complain. <laughs> There's a Life Drinker. It looks like uh, Orange is... Wow, so not getting full value to the Healing Rain... Orange just wants to make sure he's as stable as possible, potentially yeah. going to Shadow Walk turn, but this Shadow Walk is not the most powerful. And to be honest, since this is the Witchwood Invitational, and the goal, yes, it's to win for these players, but it's also to show off some of the new cards. I'm jamming Shadow Walk every time. <laughs> you can tell Ali's thinking about it. She's like, I really want to play the Shutter Walk, but I really want to win this game too. <laughs> well, I I'm pretty sure Shadow Walk he wins again. Yeah, this is, this is. definitely <laughs> play. This is just crazy. I mean, what are the odds of this right. happening? There's like, another plus one. You plus are one. playing a Shutterwalk Shaman yourself as Orange, and suddenly you run into Shutterwalk Rogue, and they're getting a ton of battle cries from it. Oh, and it gets an Archmage. Archmage is it Arugal? Like Arugula? Yeah. <laughs> Archmage Arugula, yeah. Uh, uh, he, he's very healthy. Two mana, two, two, legendary mage minion. It says whenever you draw a minion, add a copy of it to your uh, hand. No, Valspawn Slayer is not a battle cry. It's a combo. Oh, that's right. I always forget about that. Uh, because while it has a that, similar effect as a battle cry, Tess? it reads as it's a combo. Test great main. Eight mana, six, six. She can play Shutterwalk again. Yes. It says battle cry. Play all of the cards that you've played previously in this game <laughs> that are not from your class. Uh... That or, or that are that are from other classes rather. Does that include battle cries? <laughs> I'm so. Does lost. it say play them? It says replay. I. That's a great question. Because it's not resummon. It says replay. I don't know. I'm curious to see how that works. Hopefully, we'll see. <laughs> Look at Allie's face too. She's like, what? This game is a mess right now. <laughs> not from her side. From her side, this game is incredible. It's just funny. Like, what are the odds of this happening? Take that silence, Shutterwalk. Well, that oh is... Oh, my gosh. T TJ, what is going on? That is lethal <laughs> damage, but... Whoa. Whoa, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm Shadow Step in the Shutterwalk every time. Okay, so you just simply don't kill Orange here. You take him, like, two, let him know you've got the business. She's really thinking about it. I'm just, <laughs> she's like, I really want to play the second shutter walk. But. Yeah. She thought about it for a second, but Ali Straza is going to take game number one, Rogue versus Shutter Walk Shaman. Starting things off on the right foot. And, uh, you know, goes to show while the Shutter Walk Shaman is very powerful, it does need time to assemble all those pieces. Double Kaliseth does not give you much time. And Double Kaliseth, as we've seen in the past, I don't know, 
It's about been about a year now. Been about a year. Feels like uh, a little does, less, I guess. Does not give you much room to breathe, especially when they shutterwalk you on nine. That, you know, it's kind of it's funny to me that you know shutterwalk shaman is in the very first game, but it was actually just shutterwalk rogue <laughs> that we're seeing. <laughs> Burgle cards are so fun, and I think Tess is really you know it, it really reminds me a lot of shutterwalk as well, where it's just yeah. it's a replay mechanism of something that you typically don't find a deck exclusively doing. But now you have a, a great card to build around with an end game objective. It's like burgling cards before. It's like I hope this is useful. Now it's just a sheer amount of numbers. It's like, yeah, enough cards of any class, almost regardless of how good or bad they are, is just enough to, to get something done. It's just a value generator. Yeah. Is effectively what it is. And especially with like Blink Fox, which is a very reasonably statted minion. It's a three mana three three. Yeah. That also puts in a, a card from your opponent's class in your hand. So uh, definitely uh, could be seeing that rogue archetype maybe thrown into a tempo shell like we saw with Alistraza uh, be quite powerful. Uh, so uh, Orange. Back to the drawing board for him. Uh, didn't work out in this game, but I feel like against maybe a little bit of a slower deck or even a tempo deck like that that doesn't get as quick of a start. Yeah. Orange wasn't too far off from being able to assemble, assemble, uh, assemble, <laughs> assemble the combo. New word. Just thrown into it's one. Perfectly cromulent word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something something that I I think is really cool about uh, about this conquest format right now is that. Even if a player doesn't win with the deck, which just means we get to see it again. Like, can it work the way it's intended to work? And we are going to see it again. Ooh. And Alistraza is playing Quest Warrior, and by the look of the cards in her hand, it looks like it is the odd cost warrior. That's right. With Baku the Moon Eater. So, so we're going to be one. seeing some tank up. So at the start of the game, it if you have Baku the Moon Eater in your deck, and you only have odd costed cards in your deck, you upgrade your hero power. If you remember Justicar True Heart, She's back. And if you don't remember, all the classes get upgraded, and the hero power for a warrior goes from two armor to four armor a turn. Now, you may be asking, Admiral, but why play the quest? You're going to get rid of your tank up once you equip that soul for us. Well, Admiral. You also... It doesn't matter at that point. You become you become Ragnaros. <laughs> yeah. At that point, you, you've theoretically gained enough armor to stabilize yourself enough to where the Sofrost can win the game yeah. in the Ragnaros Hero Power. Th and that was one of the troubles that, that Quest Warrior had for yeah. quite a while, actually, was its ability to simply sustain itself. You might be thinking that a deck full of nothing but basically taunt minions would have not a tough time doing that, but the reality of the matter is that you take a lot of chip damage if your opponent's able to go wide on board. Yeah. Say they have like a Blessing of Kings to run over one of your taunts. Suddenly a very threatening minion. So having tank up available does give you uh, some extra time. And also, some of the control decks deal a lot more damage than they used to. I'm looking you know, towards Q-Block, for instance. Lots of Doom Guards deal lots of damage, and lots of tank ups mean lots more life. And also, Admiral, you may ask me, does Baku affect the Soul Frost here at power? Does it become 16 damage? The answer to that is no. No. It only upgrades it your starting, starting hero power. power. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately! You know, you can make it deal 16 if you really want to, though, TJ. Yes, with uh, uh, the... Clockwork Automaton, is it? Clockwork Automaton? I, I think, don't know. I think that that's at least close to correct. It's a 5-mana 4-4 four four that says double the damage and healing of your hero powers. Yep. So that's right. It will deal 16 if you have a Sulfuros from uh, Fire Plume's Heart. That's pretty cool. I don't know. <laughs> 60 damage is pretty cool. <laughs> Ragnaros is pretty cool. Zola is just such a cool card. Yeah. And Orange using the Zola early to get the Life Drinker, because Life Drinker is one of the most important battle cries uh, for Shadow Walk later in the game. Because it allows you to, uh, you know, keep stabilizing every time you play one. And I say every time you play one, because the full combo is post-Grumble, when you're going to be able to summon multiple Shadow Walks because of Serenite Chain Gang, and then the Grumble Battle Fry Battle Cry takes place, and you bring back one mana Shutter Walks into your hand, and then continue the combo as is. Yeah, you could you can oftentimes an uh, infinite loop you of can, Shutter Walks. <laughs> you can oftentimes Shutter Walk twice, and it's not too terribly uncommon if you have the time to do so. You know, being able to play Zola the Gorgon prior to it, being able to play Grumble prior to it. This is more of a matchup that I think. Uh, Orange is looking for, where he expects to take some damage, but not in these giant bursts all at once. Not from super health efficient minions. If you're trying to fight against Shutterwalk Shaman on an attrition war perspective, you have the clock against you because Shutterwalk it will very easily turn that around. 
Uh, the way you want to beat this deck is exactly how Ali Straza did in game number one. It's giant minions early on that deal a lot of damage and pressure. And boards that aren't cleared by a volcano. Well, that helps too. <laughs> or reload after the volcano and force them to have second volcano. Or both. Or both. Both is good. Both is great. Reckless Flurry, five damage to all minions. There goes the armor. Yeah, but she only had five at that stage, so uh, not a not a terribly large amount. That's what use the tank up for? Yeah, and tank up's just going to be able to get that armor total back up much quicker. Gore Howl in hand, second Reckless Flurry. Ali Strauss has got some good cards in this one, but Orange, he's got, he's having so much time to build up the his battle cry pool. And so a lot of times uh, with this deck, what I've seen so far is when I'm watching people stream it, sometimes I'm going to just play Grumble. You don't necessarily need to generate value from Grumble. It's the fact that you're adding that to your Death Rattle pool. I'm sorry, to your Battle Cry pool. Uh, it unlocks the potential for Shutter Rock to have those multiple endgame instances. I wonder. So we we've seen in the past in Azoth, which resummons all of your uh, Death Rattle minions. Now we're seeing Shutter Rock, which recasts all your Battle Cries. We've seen Yogg'Saron, which recasts all your spells. All your spells. What's, effectively. What's next? Weapons. <laughs> Replay all your weapons. <laughs> <laughs> just one by one, they all just die over and over again. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Retake all the damage uh, you've taken this game. <laughs> oh, and there's also Hadronox. Oh yeah, replay all your taunts. Replay all your taunts. Wow, I mean, I mean there's a lot of things you can do with that then. Regain all your mana crystals. <laughs> Twig of the World Tree. Boom, I, I made up a card, it already exists! <laughs> Hearthstone's too smart! Oh, and uh, uh, Coon the Forgotten King. Oh my gosh, there's... My dream is dead. <laughs> Can't be a card designer. <laughs> Admirables, making up cards that already exist. Your Honor, you take away our right to steal ideas, where else they got to come from? <laughs> All right, and there's the grumble effect, bringing back a life drinker. Yeah, and life drinker and the fire plume harbinger. Yeah, once you, if you get value from grumble, though, Nah, it starts to get a little bit scary. This is a lot of stuff that Orange is going to get. And uh, Ali Straza with Orange still at 30 and two copies of Healing Rain in his hand. I think that this this is a very uphill battle that she's somehow got to figure out. And already the Serenade Chain Gang and the Shutter Walk in hand. Multiple life triggers being played. The Grumble Battle Cry being triggered already. The Murmuring Elemental to double your next battle cry. It's, yep. There's a, there's a lot. There's a lot. And these taunt options, not the best. But at this point, it's pretty much just about finishing the quest to try and put Orange on the back foot slightly. Now, there is there is a chance that Shutterwalk can't play multiple instances, even if you have the ideal Battlecry pool. Uh, what would happen is the Grumble and the Zola the Gorgon would both uh, be in the chain of Battlecries prior to Sarnet Chain Gang happening. If that's the case, that's a chance for Ali Straza to sustain through one copy of Shutterwalk, kill it, so that it's dead, and then Orange is out of Shutterbox at that point. Then he's got to win the game the, the natural way, just good old attacking with minions and stuff. Yeah, I really liked how you put it there. Kill it so that it's dead. Yeah. Because once you, you kill it, it's dead. Yeah. It's hard for Orange to, to make a second copy of it if it's not alive. Ah, healing rain. So peaceful. So serene. I love I love the, the rainbow that goes across the sky when you play healing rain. Like across your hero portrait. Like the animation. Well... Admiral, that's just science. Well, I know that. I'm just saying I like it. Oh, me too. Yeah. I also do as well. <laughs> I also do as well. Out of my jungle. All right, one top minion away from quest completion. I'll to get that done this turn. Can't equip Soul Frost this turn. I'm looking uh, at Rotten Apple Bomb. Yep, Rotten Apple Bomb. Rotten Apple Bomb jeans. Equips and boots with the fur. Good to go. Twigs with the leaves. What's that? What's the? What are the greaves from the uh, the solo adventure that make all your minions cost zero this turn? Uh, minion greaves. Oh jeez. I don't know. Someone tweeted me. Let me know what the name of that thing is. That's a great question, though, Admiral. That that's the boots. <laughs> the boots with the minions. <laughs> all right, Burlock drawn. Uh, Burlock, I I haven't seen included in every list. Granted, we have not seen very much of. <laughs> I've seen about 20 different Shutter yeah. Rock Shaman lists. So have I. They have one thing in common, or well, a few things in common. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. My claws. 
and does fit the murmuring elemental in there. So he's going to trigger twice. And Ali Straza, that is the face of someone who just got shutter walked. Yeah, I noticed that Grumble has yet to happen as well. So there are going to be uh, at least there's going to be at least one one cost copy of shutter walk in hand because the chain gang happens first. And there it is. Yeah. You want to see that grumble right away. If it happens before Shutterwalk copies himself, different story. Oh, and uh, because they trigger twice, because of the Murmuring Elemental, we oh, get to go through it again. That's right. He Murmuring, so he is guaranteed on the Murmuring. Yes. There's no outcome in which he does not end up with a one-cost uh, grumble in his hand. Yeah. Uh, fill up his hand first, and then it burns him, maybe? That's about it. And... Yeah, that's a uh, that's a uh, four more shutter walks. Yeah, that's uh that's that's three probably them, gonna do it. <laughs> three of them cost one, and one of them cost nine. Not that it matters. And then you just keep doing that over and over again. And that, folks, is shutter walk shaman in a nutshell. That was a hard sentence to say. I liked it though. It was well crafted. Thank you. You like combo. This is <laughs> this is a great time to be alive. Uh, now there is ten cards in hand, so Orange is forced to overdraw the far sight. <laughs> oh no! And I'm pretty sure that I just <laughs> <laughs> just gets up. He just leaves. He's like, "Yep, that'll do it." Let me <laughs> let me refill this coffee real quick, oh and uh, God. <laughs> that that's oh. yep, that's how that works. Oh my! That's how that works. If you like combo, this is the time to be alive in Hearthstone <laughs> right now. He just jammed down his three grumbles with the Murmuring Elemental. Uh. It's so spectacular. Hashtag well played, Orange. <laughs> I thought he gives the thumbs up as he comes back. Dude. He's like, oh, it's still going, yeah. I wanted, I wanted to catch the end of this. Uh. This is what happens when you play a deck that gives Shutterwalk Shaman enough time to piece together that combination. Yeah, the key is is restricting its time. It's got a window of opportunity to make this happen. And if you could pressure it out instead, oftentimes uh, you can have enough board presence where the Shutter Walk doesn't actually have time to, to kill you. You know, it maybe deals you a lot of damage, but say you have a big board-wide buff and uh, just enough damage in play to uh, to kill your opponent, that's the way you do it. If you want to stop it from a, from a pure suppression angle, though, that likely is not going to happen. Uh, no. I'm trying to think if you, play, if you played like going into that turn if you played like two mana wraiths and they didn't have any zaps <laughs> zap is a zero mana deal two damage overload for one and they just kill it and do it the next turn well they're overloaded so they got to kill the mana wraiths ah yeah. so it delays it a few turns so you so you wait and then you call to arms at the perfect moment to get two mana wraiths in play that's a suppression effect that kills it nicely done admirable you found the counter nice the mana wraiths Thousands of players are currently going to their collection to craft Mana Wraith right now. Golden Dude. Mana Wraiths. Golden Mana Wraiths. Yep. Uh, there was a time when Mana Wraith was uh, played in a few decks. I, I can't even remember which one. It was a few years it's back. It's occasionally been an okay card. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we need that sort of uh, disruption tool early on. But Orange ties it up one to one. And uh, that means the Shutterwalk Shaman is uh, no longer uh, in Orange's available decks uh, with the Conquest format. So uh, we're going to be seeing something else from him this game. I do like the odd cost card warrior, the Baku the Moon Eater warrior. It's a very natural fit. It, it does feel like it. There's a lot of strong top minions at five uh, with uh, Rotten Apple Bomb, which was just released, the Direhorn Hatchling, uh, which was from the End Coral set. Uh, there's also Acolyte of Pain, Stonehold Defender at the three slot. Tar Creeper. Tar Creeper as well. So it just kind of makes sense. And it's not like a, you know, if you've seen top quest warrior in the past, it's not like a traditional combo, or sorry, uh, control deck where it just tries to run your opponent out of resources. It tries to stabilize long enough with taunt minions in order to complete a quest, which becomes its win condition. That's right. And it's, uh, it's going to be Voodoo Doll. the old taunt warrior again for Ali Straza. Orange, he's moving over to Q block, but there's quite a few new tools that this deck picked up that are uh, they're a bit interesting to me. I think, I think one of the ones that really interests me the most is um, Dark Possession. Yep. It's a one-cost uh, spell. It says deal two damage 
uh, to a friendly character, so you can target yourself with this, and then you discover a demon. Which also includes Nightmare Amalgam, because it is an elemental, a mech, a demon, a murloc, a dragon, a beast, a pirate, and a totem. It's like, that, it's like the end of that Johnny Cash song. <laughs> I'm every minion type man. <laughs> you know, you know. He's like, and he's just listening I, off I all, do the, know. all the minions that he is. I do. Not know. the places that he's been. I was thinking it's more like a Bob Dylan song. <laughs> just because it, I feel like he's. Oh, because you can't understand it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I feel like he said all of those words at one point in some of his songs, but I have no idea. Uh, yeah, and also some of the other tools that uh, Orange has included: in Rat Catcher, which. Uh, destroys a friendly minion, uh, gains its stats, and also has rush. Yeah, three minute two-two. Yeah, so it, it, it can act as a uh, cube activator as well as removal tool in the same card. Yeah. Because you're gaining its stats, you're destroying it to activate the death rattle, and then you can use that, which is now a 6-8 rush that can help you uh, gain back the board and destroy your opponent's minions. It also sticks around. It's also just a good card. I mean, you know, say like say like you pulled a Void Lord out of a Skull of Minari. Yeah. And you don't really need the Void Lord. Your opponent's not applying a lot of pressure. They just have like one big thing stacked on the board. The Ratcatcher yeah. can uh, absorb those stats and just act as a value machine, just hitting down minion after minion after minion because it just got plus three, plus nine. Yeah. And also another card included is Baleful Banker, which is a two-mana 2-2 two -two that uh, chooses a friendly minion and puts a copy of that minion in your deck. Yeah, I love so that banker. So with all the demons that you want in your deck and possess lackey and just the way the deck works with you want to have a flood of demons that are constantly being uh, kind of cheated out, uh, Belfal Banker just allows you to have one more that you have access to in your deck. Uh, also Lord Godfrey, uh, which is sort of the defile effect, seven mana, four, four, that deals two damage to every minion. And then if it kills- Every other one, minion. Every other minion. Yeah. And then if it kills one, it repeats that effect. So it's like, a very <laughs> upgraded defile that's attached to him. It's like a hyper primordial Drake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. D that just keeps going. Um, and of course, uh, Rotten Apple Bomb, which we've talked about, which is kind of just sort of that anti aggro tool. Uh, five mana, four, five taunt, which restores four health to your hero. So uh, a lot of new tools being utilized by Orange in this, this Q block. It does sort of have the same types of win conditions that Q block did in, in previous iterations. It just has a couple ways to do that even better at times, which is uh, pretty neat. It did loosen his off, uh, so it, it can't summon back that huge board of, of Void Lords and Cubes again. Uh, sad day. I love his off. Yeah, but did get some tools to make up for it. Alex Shraza, though, is... This Taunt Warrior is getting in some damage. Well, that's the thing. is I mean, you still have to check Taunt Warrior. You can't just... Any deck that plays minions, you have to check eventually. You can't just leave, you can't just ignore the stuff. Yeah. But that's what the Skull of Minari is for. You ignore it for just one more turn, and then you start cranking out some demons. But there are what looks like some. Uh... Wait, is that Lord Godfrey in hand? He's it not a demon, Lord, is he? Lord Godfrey in hand? No, he's, he's not. not. Okay, yeah. There's no negative hits here. For some reason, I was thinking that was a demon. Nope. And there's the Rat Catcher. Ooh. Uh, one five poisonous in play for. For Ali, though, I mean, Orange has got to take care of that. That's going to wipe out the uh, the Void Lord body really easily. Yes, it is. And stick around as well. Uh, Orange does have the option to uh, Q plus Dark Back. Oh, no, no, that's not. Pff, that's, that's a reasonable play. It's not, it's not that powerful. Yeah, and on Ali Straza's side, uh, we didn't talk about uh, some of the cards that Odd Cost Warrior lost. Voodoo Doll is sort of in there to make up for the loss of Execute. It's a three mana, three, three, or three mana, one, one. It's his battle cry. Choose a minion. I think it's a zero, one. No, it's a one, one. Oh, is it a one, one? Yeah. Okay. It's a three mana, one, one, and it says battle cry, choose a minion, and then it says death rattle, destroy that minion. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, like a, like spooky little, um, what are those things called? Uh, pumpkins? No. Uh, Baseball bats? I guess it's just Voodoo Doll. You know, like in all the cartoons, and they'd like put the like the pin in it or whatever, and like uh, they would yeah. tickle it with the feather, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I, ha, ha, I can't stop yeah. laughing!" Voodoo doll. Oh, what is it? It's one of those. Oh, uh, geez. They're, voodoo dolls. No, there's a specific name for it that I can't think of right now. I don't know what it is. I'm not a I'm not a word wizard. Little known fact. The only thing that's come to my head is acupuncture doll. But that <laughs> that makes wow, I feel so much better. <laughs> that makes zero sense. No, I know what you're talking about. Though. 
It's some spooky word that I can't think of. Now, the one downside to having Baku the Moon Eater in your deck is that sometimes you actually draw Baku the Moon Eater. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty well statted. It's a 9 mana 7 9. Uh, it's subjective. It's a Doom Caller. 9 mana. It's a 7 8? 7 9? 7 9. Yeah. I think it's a 7 9. Uh, it It's like a Doom Caller. You, you, you don't necessarily put it in the deck because of the body. Of course. Yeah. The cool thing that I like about uh, Baku and Gen Greyman, its even cost counterpart, is that when you throw it in your deck in the collection, uh, at the beginning of your uh, deck creation, uh, you get the option to filter all of your cards by even or odd cost, uh, depend yeah. odd cost depending on uh, uh, whether it was Baku or Gen that you had put in your deck. So very first time I did that, I was like, "Oh, that is super helpful." The very first time I did it, I actually made my whole deck before I put Baku in. <laughs> And it's like, do you want to sort your, your collection by odd cost cards? And I was like, Dang wow, it. this would have been really helpful. Uh, uh, so just a, a fun tip for you guys if you're trying to experiment. Oh. Oh, no. Blunder. <laughs> so there were some pro players that were tr that were making, you know, sort of jokes on social media saying, I can't even think of a board that Lord Godfrey doesn't clear. Well, and Orange is probably thinking that in his head right now. Correct. <laughs> he cannot think of a board that Lord Godfrey doesn't clear. <laughs> yeah, he didn't now, think of it. You can realize them, but thinking of it, much more difficult. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't clear everything. You do have to have a two health minion to start, or that, one health. Yeah, the Grizzly the grizzly guy is not so good. That five mana yeah. uh, that Ali Strauss has got in hand, the, that guy, he, he loses a health for each card your opponent has in hand. So against aggro, that's usually a pretty good tool. It's, I mean, yeah. there's, oftentimes they'll have, you know, between zero and three cards in hand. So you're looking at like three, nine taunt a lot of times for that. Against Warlock, however, they're often going to have, you know, seven, eight, nine cards in hand. Loses a little bit of weight. So there's a there's some hit and miss with that card. Yeah. All Orange needed to do on the previous turn was attack one of his <laughs> uh, Voidwalkers, I believe, into a the... single one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but just kind of, you know, probably got a little bit of ahead of, ahead of himself. It happens to the best of us. Especially with... Uh, and we're talking day one of new cards. Yeah. Hasn't even been out for 48 hours. How much time could you have really had to go through the motions of, of memorizing uh, simple formulas for Lord Godfrey activation checks? But it still looks like Orange has a pretty considerable lead. Now, Ali Straza will be able to get, uh, if she picks up one more top minion, will be able to get the Soul Frost online. But is it too late since Orange has such a massive board? Well, that is uh, that's eight damage to the board with with another tank up activation. Nine damage with shield block. Hmm. There's some stuff going on here. The the problem is that Orange has got Blood Reaver Gul'dan in hand, so she would need to do that twice. She does have. Uh, looks like the two copies of the Reckless Flurry, but not the second one in hand, and she still needs another Taunt Minion to be able to complete the quest. She has so no hope of winning the game unless she. Starts to get the eight damage right. online. I spotted, I spotted the out. You leave the void, uh, the one threes, the void walkers there. You get Sulfurous online, and just every single shot hits Orange in the face. Every Whoa. single one. Admirable. You're Brawl! Huh. Brawl is usually best saved for post Sulfurous because it allows you to isolate a target. But that's the second board clear is the key. Yeah, so now has at least somewhat of an answer to Blood Reaver. I wonder why she tanked it first there. Because she had nine armor, is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Maybe yeah, that's uh, that's just a little bit of a mechanical mistake. Does she want to take damage for anything? Uh, no, uh, because it's an odd cost card deck, so she's going to have access to Battle Rage. Yeah, just a l little bit of a mechanical. You know, Orange is... Uh, Orange uh, does a big one. You gotta do a little one for Orange too. You're like here, like I know I would take a little extra damage here. Let me tank up first, yeah. <laughs> making him feel a little bit better about himself <laughs> for the Lord Godfrey. How kind. Orange gonna keep tapping away. Tippity tapping. Something funny about just having seven taunts in play. Seven taunts and only ten power. Gonna heal up off Be his own forward walk in order to make space for the oh. Doom Guard so next turn. 
Ooh. I mean, now Ooh. Allie's got some pieces moving now. I mean, this is this is not totally out of reach. She's missing a taunt. But Tank Up's negating four of the uh, nine damage on board right now. What but with the Dark Pack being played in the Voidwalker, Alexstrasza has to realize that there's probably a demon in hand, and since both Voidwalkers have been naturally pulled from the hand, it's going to be a Doom Guard, so that pressure's going to be a little bit higher. What now? Come on, it's just thinking about slamming the Baku here. I was thinking about it. I kind of just want to draw cards, too. You know, you, you got to think about what's in your deck right now and how you get out of these situations. When you yeah, at, she know, does need to get the taunt. The, ton the of new cards in your deck, and you know you don't know exactly what's in Orange's deck either. He's got some new stuff in there. It's a little bit harder. Voodoo Doll, of course, also very welcome in a lot of the Q block decks using uh, Dark. Or, I'm sorry, Dark Pact or just Mortal Coil it. Or even just sweeping it up in an AOE with Defile, and you can kill a lot of big stuff very easily with Voodoo Doll. Or even just leaving it there. I've done that, and it didn't feel very good when I got Spellbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, I should have just waited. I should have just taken the 14 damage from his Furnace Fire Colossus. <laughs> <laughs> Furnace Fire Colossus. Oh, that's the replay already weapons. It just replays them all like it's like an inverse effect. Ah, there so it already exists. Hellfire? Just to make board space, I guess? Yeah, it makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And the Baleful Banker, which will shuffle another Doom Guard. Get in there, Doom Guard. Uh, back into your deck. A similar effect to the, uh, was it Manic Soulcaster? Yeah, the three mana three four mage card. That's right. Uh, which I don't believe is in the format anymore. No, that was uh, it was part of uh, Mean Streets of Gadgets and. Yeah. So, so Allie draws a couple taunts. She's got the uh, Phantom Militia. Is that what's called? Uh, Phantom Militia. Yes. Two four with Echo. Echo allows you to replay the card as many times as you can in that turn for its same mana cost. And she's under heat. So she's got to she's got to check the board. She's got to defend herself. She's got to find a way to launch an assault on Orange. And once again, combo combo style decks are really what uh, a lot of control decks are going to suffer to. Yes, their goal is to kill a lot of just very efficient minions that your opponent plays, and then to have uh, an inevitability condition towards the end. Was finally complete, but it may be just a little bit too late. Orange is still sitting at a healthy life total of 20. No demon this turn, though. He's got to he's gotta use the old Blood Reaver Gul'dan if he wants that. Oh, no. Well, if there's no Doom Guard. There's one Doom Guard. Yeah, but if it doesn't get summoned, there's only seven spaces. Oh, uh, yeah. Seven Ward Walker. No. Nope. Yeah, that's Doom Guard. Wow, that's actually, I forgot about the Flame Imp, too. That's quite unlucky for Allie. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, low-cost demons in the pool. There was a chance for seven Voidwalkers. It doesn't shred it, so, I mean, this is this is very certainly, in my opinion, a Brawl turn. It's just how do you Brawl? Is it Iron Beak Owl with the 3-9 in Brawl, so that way if it dies, Orange doesn't get the taunts, so that maybe you can you know clear the way for Sulfuros to get big? Do you maybe just play a bunch of taunts on your own? Or if you're feeling exceptionally unlucky... You can voodoo doll brawl to guarantee that the Void Lord dies. <laughs> the problem is the one threes, though. Yeah, I suppose. It's some sort of brawl. That's that's kind of that's kind of where my head is sitting right now. I could see like a you know a pair of taunts and a, and a tank up. You know, just force Orange to try to push through it with a bunch of you know relatively attack inefficient minions, but that that opens her up to if Orange has got uh, you know that voodoo doll of his own if he's got big spell stones that have been. Buffed up. So I like this play. This Let's is, I think, the best chance. Wins. Oh, the Iron Beak Owl was so close. He needed to take out one little Flame Imp. <laughs> the final battle was between Flame Imp and Iron Beak Owl. But stifled a lot of the pressure. Got through the, the oh, only boy. wave of demons. That's a Doom Guard. 
That's a cube. And that's hero powers for days. Yeah, I mean, this turn just looks, to be honest, like a hero power attack with the flame and pass to set up for next so turn. The Doom Guard being summoned. And then you can Q plus Rat Catcher to get through a taunt. Yep. Q and plus Rat Catcher. That's a lot. That's three Doom Guards attacking that turn. Yeah, I just don't see a way out for Ali Shaza here. She just doesn't have enough time to deal the remaining 28 points of damage plus some because of the hero power health swing. Yeah, one of the, one of the, big, the big things I feel like you miss with Odd Cost Warrior is the ability to play Dry Whisker or Armorer get 14 armor from your opponent's board and then brawl. That, that to me, has been one of the major stabilizing tools for a lot of control warrior decks is uh, just the big armor swings they get when your opponent has a full board and then clearing it out. So it gives you time to actually do something post-response to your brawl as well. So if your opponent keeps initiative very well, you have something that keeps compounding that issue over and over again. Yeah. Also, you can't play Rot Face. Just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> can't play any even cost cards. Rot face. Why was that? <laughs> it's the first one you go to. It's an eight mana warrior legendary. It's a good god. He's a good guy. Poor little flame man. He's so young. And uh, it looks like that is. Uh, no. Not it's quite. Not very useful. Oh, no, it is. Uh, 13 health. Yep. Because he could fit into hero power as well. Ah, yeah. So it looks like that's exactly 13 damage. Because Orange has the Rat Catcher to be able to activate the cube. I'm going to eat. And then Hero Power to finish the game. Yep. It looks like Orange is going to take game number three. So that keyword Rush. Rush is going to attack minions this turn. Can't attack players this turn. Yeah, but Rat Catcher just also has the added benefit of a lot of times you just need something to activate your cube on the same yeah. turn that you play it. It's a good card. And it has the bonus of that it gains stats and it gains that rush. You can push through and then push through damage with Doom Guards. Uh, very nice addition uh, to the deck. And Orange goes up in the series two to one now, match point. And keep in mind, uh, for those who just may be joining us, the first four matches are effectively playing for an advantage in the winner take all finals. Every match that they win out of the four, uh, they get an additional ban, additional class ban in the winner take all finals where well, they'll have to choose one of their players uh, to uh, play in that in that final match. Meaningful exhibitions. That's right, yeah. yeah. It's a way to showcase the new cards. It's a way for them to show off their stuff and their deck building skills. Uh, but they're also playing for that little bit of an advantage as we move closer to the finals, which will happen later on in the day. Man, I just love Voodoo Doll. <laughs> card's so cool. Uh, we didn't get really to see Admirable that was playing, so <laughs> Admirable, with his limited amount of time to experiment with new cards in less than 24 hours of the Witchwood to try and learn as much as he could about the format in order to cast today. Decided to spend his time playing Fatigue Warrior. <laughs> Played eight games in four hours. Whoa, nine games. Nine games in four hours. <laughs> Which is a lot when you really think about it. And none of those games he dealt the killing blow. All of those times he just exhausted his opponent of resources, and then exhausted his opponent physically and mentally, and they conceded. <laughs> it was a fun time. I was uh, jamming games, uh, you know, across the room, and I played probably like eight games. Then Admiral turns around and goes, I got him! <laughs> and it was the, the same game that he'd been playing like 35 minutes prior. I had one 47-minute game. None will survive. It was, it was against the... Uh, it was against a priest that played an Archbishop Benedictus. But I already had a dead man's hand in my hand. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So let's get into it. Alistraza is going to play well, the orange. Uh, odd cost warrior again. Orange, uh, he's on even cost paladin right now. Notice his hero power costs one mana. That's that's uh, again gray main for you. If your deck contains only even cost cards at the start of the game, your hero power becomes one mana. And so there's a uh, Paladin, I think, is, is one of the classes that has pretty exceptional use with both Baku and with Gen Greymane. Uh, with the odd cost uh, Paladin, you end up with level up, you end up with uh, Lost in the Jungle, Righteous Protector, but you don't have Call to Arms. You don't have Knife Juggler. With the even cost Paladin, of course, you lose the cards I just mentioned, but you get Call to Arms, you get Knife Juggler. You get Sunkeeper Terra. That's right. Those, I mean, those are huge cards. Now... 
in the odd cost paladin you get stone hill defender which now with weaker flame uh burn bristle being rotated out you have a higher likelihood than the last set to get sunkeeper terror because it's weighted more towards class cards but interesting trade-offs that you have yeah i just think if, if you look at them side by side the one mana hero power or the two mana but summon two one ones the summon two one one seems like it can flood the board way more easily but you kind of have like weaker overall boards if that makes sense weaker overall cards really is what yeah. it feels like to me anyway and so trade-off is that your hero power is worth a lot more yeah, though it, it's going to be really interesting to see the evolution of what these even cost odd cost paladins become which one emerges as the front runner or if none of them emerge as the front runner and people just play good stuff aggro paladin <laughs> It's possible. With both even cost and odd cost cards. I know it's crazy to think about. <laughs> I've never done this before. You know, it is a, it is an interesting thought, though. What's better? Is it card quality or is it just stuff? Like, is more stuff better than card quality? I don't know. A lot of times it is. Just depends on, on what your opponents are doing. What's better? A pound of mediocre chocolate or a single bite? Of delicate, delicious, decadent, triple D See, chocolate. To me, to me, that's not a question. Yeah, a pound of chocolate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's the exact opposite. <laughs> so Ooh, I love that little guy, too. The, so that uh, means that I play Odd Cost Paladin. <laughs> you play Cost Paladin. Uh, the Vicious Scalehide. 1 3 Rush Lifesteal. Uh, with Even Cost Paladin, I think this is a great addition to. Um, what's going to be coming out of Call to Arms because it just provides you some sort of immediate damage to go with it. Now, something that Orange doesn't have that uh, I'm quite interested in is that he actually doesn't have Direwolf Alpha in the deck. And so uh, when I was when I was playing against it and I was playing with it, Direwolf Alpha landing next to one of these guys was was also like another big uh, factor that, that was included into that. Just the fact that it was a 2-3 that could attack immediately meant Call to Arms was providing you not only just the immediate advantage of having the board, but the immediate advantage of the attack as well. You know what card's interesting to me? Um, uh, hang on. Rock Iron Bark Protector. No. Dang it. Uh, the Glass Knight in Orange's deck. It's a 4-mana four 4-3 four, with Divine Shield that whenever your hero gains health, it gains Divine Shield. That's a new Paladin Legendary. New Paladin Legendary, but the only way that Orange has to gain health in his deck. True Silver Champion. And oh, no, the Vicious Scale Hide. Vicious Scale Hide. Huh. Just a little tiny hidden synergy with it. It, it reminds me a lot of like a like a piloted Shredder almost. Where it's a 4-3 that just, you know, something happens to it, it sticks around. Except it features that ability to just go absolutely nuts if you... If you have the right tools yeah. to protect it. Interesting card. Warwin picked up the only AoE that Ali Shaw's has been able to find so far, and her health just starting to get chipped away a little bit. And some, something that's really interesting also about uh, Orange's deck is, you know, you think about even cost cards. You know, Tyrion's in the in the eight slot as well. It Orange is just not running Tyrion. He's running two copies of Silver Sword. Silver Sword's really good. It though. really is. It's an eight mana three four weapon that says, whenever it attacks, your minions get plus one plus one. Permanently. That is a lot of stuff on a weapon. You know, you're, you're thinking, talking about a deck that just plays a lot of, you know, little dorks. And you get enough of them, and suddenly, you know, you, you're going on a crusade. That silver sword leads the troops into battle. They're ready to fight. Dork Paladin. You know what he's also playing? He's playing a copy of Spellbreaker. <laughs> which is a four-mana 4-3 four, that can silence a minion. is going to take the opportunity to clear off some stuff while she can. Try and stifle the pressure a little bit. And good thing she did because she was going into Sunkeeper Terum turn, and that's exactly what Orange is able to pick well, up. Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to run that back, though. I mean, Orange has got another reload to the board. She's got to worry about Blessing of Kings. She's got to worry about Spike Ridge Steed. You know, all of those cards throughout the entirety of the game are going to constantly have Ali Strauss under pressure. You know, it's really the threat of the power that is the power of, of a lot of these Paladin cards. So if you're if you're out there building non cost warrior, something to think about. How on earth do you keep all this stuff in check for long enough to unlock this potential? 
That's a good t-shirt idea. The, the threat of the power is the power. Oh, it's a good metal na band name. That's just a very cliche statement that's, you know, probably centuries old. I don't actually know that, but I'm just going to guess. Who said it first? <laughs> probably Bob Dylan. <laughs> no the threat of the power is the power. And the harmonica. The He's like just jumping, get smashed playing in the 17 instruments. You know, Bob Dylan played our stuff. Slamma Jamma, the Rotten Apple Bama. <laughs> Not a great t shirt Joke idea. On that. <laughs> Not a great t shirt idea. I disagree. But. Excellent t shirt idea. <laughs> Sunkeeper Terum. Ah, uh, I actually like one one of these one ones traded in, and then the weapon what? attack, and then you one one with the hero power, and then Sunkeeper Terum. That's crazy. That's way more value. Hmm. He's got Silver Sword to draw. To I'm using that weapon. All right. I'm pretty sure it's just less damage. Maybe one of the board space. Ah. Uh, uh, I guess. Spellbreaker. Oh, you can just trade it off, though. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Could have had one extra 3-3 three -three on the board. Oh. Still the same amount of damage. Maybe you just want, you know, this is representing so much damage anyway that you just want the Terum to have a better chance to win, like on a brawl. Ah, uh, yeah, but it's, I don't think it's a. Just try to find a reason. Is percentage enough? I get you. I get you. Oh, I, th I really thought that Terum was going to win and I was going to look so smart. Not today. And Orange just can, continues the value train. Going to be able to easily trade over this Harkeeper. And oh, it just keeps on coming. It doesn't stop coming. Right. This, is, this is a brutal assault of Silverhand recruits. Allie's got... Be able to finish the quest Echo. with the Phantom Militia. So if she could keep drawing, uh, you know, board sweep style stuff, this game is still reasonable. I mean, now in Fire Plume's Heart uh, active, Sulfuros, you know, that's over two turns, it's going to kill two things. The hero power can kill stuff as well. This game's not out of reach. And Allie's holding on to that Gluttonous Ooze as well. I mean, she's looking for the right opportunity, and I think Silver Sword is probably it. But double Consecration. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that hurts. I mean, the quality consecration was there as well, but it's really the damage pouring in. So now things, we're, we're back to in trouble. Now Charles is going to go down to eight health. Minions on board. Multiple buff cards in hand for Orange. Thinking uh, Primordial Drake could be a good one, like a Discover from uh, the Stonehill. Stonehill Defender. Yep. Rotten Apple Bomb could be okay, but even Stonehill Defender would need a, one extra turn before Primordial Drake would, she would have to mana for it, so. Just gotta find a way to sustain. Has been holding on to Gluttonous Ooze for quite a while, so has a little bit of extra armor gain, punishing Orange for not attacking with the True Silver Champion. And she's held it for a, a, a few turns now, so Orange probably has to read that she doesn't have it. If she had weapon destruction, she probably would have played it. But she's been trying to get the Taunts online as quick as possible, so that's a little bit of additional health. But at some point with the uh, quest taunt warrior, you need to transition from removing the board to getting the hero power online and not playing defensively any longer. There's Tar Lord, but Orange was wise enough to hold the, the equality last turn rather than just use equality consecrate. Oh, and Ali's just, she's going for the smaller stuff. She's like, I don't have time to play this Tar Lord. Just, it's too vulnerable. You know, you think about Spellbreaker and you think about equality, spread the threats. Gain some armor in the meantime. Oh, Rebuke. Nice little new tool there. Two mana. Uh, your opponent's spells cost five next turn. Five or cost more. five more next turn. It's like Excuse the Loatheb effect. I like that card. It's not attached to a 5-5 five -five body. But think? it's much cheaper and can come much earlier in the game. You can fit it in with other stuff. You can have a lot of development and then play Rebuke 
to reduce the likelihood that your opponent can clear your board. Yeah, say you're playing against like a Shutterwalk Shaman, for instance, and they want a Volcano. Sometimes you can shut that off against a, against a warrior that wants to brawl. Mega pay 10 mana for it. And this is enough damage with a Blessing of Kings. Yeah, that's 14. That's 14. And Orange looks like he's going to take Gabe Boar and defeat Ali Shiraza with a score of 3 to 1. Putting Europe on the board, up 1 on match score, which means they get one additional ban going into that winner take all finals. Showing off the, the even cost Paladin. I like it a lot because uh, one of the things this deck always wants to do is just have something on board. Yeah. And when all your cards are even cost, what that means is you're either going to have perfect mana or you're going to have one mana floating. Sometimes maybe more. But every single time, if you have that extra mana, you get that 1-1 one, one silver hand recruit. Every single time. I love that. Yeah, so we got to see some new decks in action. We also got to see some uh, decks that we've become familiar with over the past couple months or a year. Uh, sort of their refinements uh, with the new set, with the new rotation. Uh, like Q-Block with its additional tools. We got to see sort of the, the new style of Flood Paladin uh, with Gen Grey Main and the even cost cards. Uh, so, uh, got to see... I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy. Pretty happy. We got to see a full Shutterwalk combo multiple times. From a rogue and from a shaman. From a rogue and from a shaman. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm pretty satisfied. But uh, one player that we know has to also be pretty satisfied. And that's Orange after taking this series. And we are joined by Orange for an interview. Hey, man, how's it feel after your first Witchwood victory? Hey, 100% win rate. I feel great. It was a fun match, too. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, so uh, tell me what was going through your head uh, when the moment came for you to, as the kids say these days, go off with the Shutterwalk. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's so much fun every time. I just, um, I just knew that uh, set it up with the Murmuring Elemental and, and the Life Drinkers and... Well, I knew I had to wait for like several minutes for it to be done, but I don't know. It's so far it's pretty satisfying to go off with Shutterwalker. I a Shutterwalk, I enjoy it a lot. Uh, so there, you know, the expansion has only been out for like 24 hours, but there's already a lot of players latching on to odd cost Paladin over even cost Paladin. Uh, have you gotten to experiment with both? Uh, and either way, uh, what are your thoughts between the the two archetypes there, and which one's more uh, powerful? Yeah, go, going in, uh, I actually think I didn't have like too much time to test each of them. I played like ten games each of both, uh, but um, it, I actually think that odd cost is better. But one of the requirements for uh, this tournament was uh, that you had to play eight cards from the new expansion, and uh, that was way easier to do in even cost Paladin. And uh, I, I like the look of it, so that's why I went with even cost for this tournament. But uh, I'm, I'm still not sure which is better of odd and even on uh, on some sites like even cost has higher win rates than odd cost apparently but as you said only 24 hours in yeah you said you've only got to play 10 games with each and that it's not a lot but it, probably given how much decks you've you've wanted to play 10 games seems like a lot i can't even stick with the deck for more than two games uh, <laughs> but yeah so are you confident yeah. that now with uh, taking this first match that your team's going to be able to bring it home for you and give you guys a big advantage going into the finals yeah, I, I, I prepare with all of them, and I know what all of them are bringing, and uh, I feel pretty good about it. Everyone is bringing decks they feel kind of good about, except Tyler, that I don't think I've played too much. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm confident in my teammates. Uh, they're going to be great. All right, man. Well, congratulations. If you do end up playing later on in the day, good luck. Uh, but good luck to your team regardless. Thanks, man. I f we, we didn't even mention the, the fact that uh, the players had to bring uh, at least eight Witchwood cards uh, in all of their decks as a requirement for the Witchwood Invitational. It's just for me personally right now, that feels like a requirement that I also put into my own deck building as well. Mine's I like just, 16. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like, oh, let, me try, let me try all the Town Criers and all the Rushes. Yeah. Let me try. I just keep trying them all, man. I'm going to figure out which one of those cards is good. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we actually are now joined by Ali Shraza. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get the win in that match. Uh, but oh. you, you got to showcase some of your decks. How are you feeling? I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling all right. I wish I could have gotten a win with the Warrior. Clung to that. but So maybe I should have queued my other deck. But uh, no, overall, it was a lot of fun. That first game uh, 
with the rogue and the shutter walk was kind of insane. So, <laughs> so after good. after this event is over, when you go back into your collection, what is the first thing that you're gonna do, or craft, or build? A build a shutter walk set. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have yet to actually like experiment too much with uh with shutter walk, and apparently it's it's op. So. Wait, shutter walk rogue or shutter walk shaman? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, rogue, clearly, that's more. That's definitely possible. And during that, <laughs> during that rogue game, was it going through your head to not kill Orange, and just shadow step your yeah. your shadow walk and play it again? Absolutely, and to play the test gray main as well. You yeah. know, I was just thinking about not killing him, killing him for the memes, but uh, I needed to get one game here. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Uh, what uh, what kind of decks sort of stick out in your mind after playing one match as the decks that you uh, want to experiment with more outside of Shutterwalk Shaman? Uh, like whether it was ideas that you got from yourself while playing or ideas that uh, Orange may have given you by the decks that he was playing. Uh, what deck are you sort of most excited about tinkering with or, or building in the future? Honestly, I think my lineup would have been stronger if I had gone for a Rush Warrior, like something a little bit more tempo-oriented than um, the Control Warrior. I think that would have worked worked better. So I think I'm going to try some kind of Rush tempo with Frothing Berserker or something along those lines. All right, well, I've experimented with that deck a lot. It seems pretty strong. I've only played like yeah. 15 games, but I guess that's a lot at this point. But uh uh, uh, better luck next time. Hopefully, uh, you'll you'll win a match. Hopefully, your your team can can bring it home for you guys. But uh, uh, thanks for joining us, and see you soon. All right, thanks, guys. Rush Warrior. I'm like Town Crier. It's one of my favorite cards in the set. So one mana, one two. Says draw a Rush minion from your deck. Yeah, I feel Clean. like I feel like you could also just play that plus like Darius Crowley. Oh yeah. In any control warrior, show. you can even play it in Odd Cost Warrior. That's in my fatigue deck. Yeah. Uh, you probably have to find a few more rush minions, but but uh, I'm Militia. sure you can. Militia Commander. Well, it's four. You can't play non cost paladin, but. Oh, I see. I see where you're going. Yeah. Well, you can't play Militia Commander paladin. Yeah. <laughs> TJ, that's just that's a warrior card. Yeah. You're ridiculous. Uh, but of course, if you guys have liked what you've been seeing and want to get your hands on some Witchwood cards yourself, all you have to do is log into Hearthstone uh, during this release event. And you get three free packs from the Witchwood, as well as a free legendary card from the Witchwood set uh, to uh, sort of give you a boost on your initial collection for the Witchwood. Get your hands on some of those cards. Plus, new Druid Hero Portrait. You win 10 standard games. Good new Druid Portrait. Yeah, Lunara. That's right. Uh, it's a pretty cool one. Uh, Druid hasn't had an alternate Hero Portrait yet, uh, so it's uh, pretty cool to see. Uh, it'll be a quest that comes in your quest inventory uh, once you log in as well. Uh, so a lot of uh, bonuses uh, that we have going on. And, uh, of course, more bonuses we have going on is more The Witchwood action. Uh, coming up next, we are going to have another match, which is going to be between Tyler uh, representing Europe and Dog representing the Americas. Uh, so two fantastic deck builders and two kind of different styles when it comes to, uh, you know, where they play, Dog likes to try and experiment with crazy stuff, and Tyler just likes to play the best stuff and get really high on ladder. So I'm excited for that clash of styles, excited for that clash of regions. Um, but in the meantime, while we get that match set up, we are going to have to go to a quick break. During the break, please enjoy some behind-the-scenes footage from the creation of the Witchwood. We'll be back right after this. Three words that describe Witchwood would be creepy, uh, 